Hey, this is Randy. We're coming to you from the outpost again. I've got uh, George Cook, our Northwest Regional Sitka rep with us. We're gonna talk a little bit about concealment and camouflage, right, George? Yep. Okay. Sitka Jumping gear, here. You know, a lot of folks, you know, have an opportunity to kind of get on the website, study things, and they, they learn about these things with Sitka gear. But each of our patterns, and these are indeed patterns, this being the open country mm -hmm. pattern, subalpine, and you're familiar with whitetail, what's called elevated, mm -hmm. and the various waterfowl patterns. But they are patterns, and they feature a concealment element that is both science and animal science driven. So this is a digital format, but a digital format with a big twist. Yeah, the military complex brought us digital camo. Right. Sought in uniforms as soldiers, airplanes, even ships and tanks. This idea was taken and developed into what's referred to, as you'll see it on the sleeve here, um, Optifade. Right. Okay. So each one of the Sitka patterns features Optifade. So George, the pattern is not Optifade, right? No, it's an Optifade. Okay. That's a question we get a lot of. It's the core concept, yeah. And that's that's a great question. Optifade is the science behind the patterns. Okay. 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 And in this, we we took parts of the the military complex of digital camo, which mm -hmm. obviously had changed camo forevermore, and combined it with animal science. And we commissioned a gentleman from the University of Washington, who was in Wisconsin at the time, Dr. Jay Nitz. And he literally pulled the eyeballs out of every ungulate in a, North what, America. What's an ungulate? Just so a deer, knows. an elk. Wa walking land animals, yep, right? Yeah, game animals. Okay. Let's just go with, with our, our game animals. Okay. The North American 28 being kind of right. the, the focus. Right. With the huge emphasis on stuff that we very much pursue, it's beginning with deer, elk, sheep, antelope, caribou, moose, right. stuff like that. Right. Which animal out of the 28 do you think is the least important in terms of how they process and see things? The least important? The least important. Not a clue. Boo boo bear. Really? Bears don't see well. Okay. So you can almost throw them out. Okay. okay. But for the bear who doesn't see well, we got a bunch on this sea super <laughs> yet. All right. We've got right. pronghorn being a real preeminent one found here in Eastern Oregon. The sheep, the mm -hmm. goats, caribou, mm -hmm. elk, mule deer, whitetails, all of those. Uh, and you can throw turkey in that even though it's right. not a game animal, it's certainly a Be pursued animal. Being a bird, do they see very similarly? Or Well, they see incredibly kind of well. The, the, the turkey of, of all the various game bird species is probably the most octocular okay. uh, sensitive in terms of seeing things, uh, movement sensitive. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, these patterns have been developed utilizing animal science. Okay. In that animal science, these patterns create zones of engagement, meaning, and this is kind of funky and I'll try not to get too far in the weeds, but if we look around the store and we look at your Daniel defense banner, we look at uh, the American flag right up there, we look at these block targets, all these things, even that Chinook mount on the wall, mm -hmm. all these things have a what? An outline. They have an outline, that's right. exactly right. And that outline is such that we call that a positive spatial matrix, meaning to, to kind of drill that down, you can't miss it because of the outline, right? Right. right. Okay. So an animal who is able to see an outline, say you or I walking on a ridge top, right. um, we become a beacon. Right. And so we're going to create all sorts of cause and alarm. So we stand out as a flag would on a skyline. Just that you like and that I would there. see driving down the road. Correct. That's right. We're a billboard. Right. Which is bad news to game owners, <laughs> okay. right? Good news for them, bad so, news for us. Yeah, meaning we're out of it. Right. We've, we've given ourselves up. But in engagement ranges, generally speaking in the big game category, being roughly 25, 40 yards, this stuff melds 
into the environment to where you become nothing. Now to explain that a little better, if you look at that Daniel Defense banner up there, you can't miss it, okay? A, it's black against a right. brown wall, but more importantly, it's got an outline. Right. But if you take your eyes and you just look at this floor right quick, and you look at the floor, your head says, that's the floor. Right. And you dismiss that. Right. Whereas you look up at that sign, you go, ooh, that's a sign, and what does it say? Right, right. I dismissed the floor. Right. There could be a gun barrel pointed at me out of that floor, and I already dismissed it. Right. Whereas I can't miss that, and now I'm focused on it. Big game animals, when you meld into the countryside, you become technically what we call negative spatial matrix. You become nothing. In this end, so as you said, effect, we become dismissible. Yes, to the animal. We may be, we may have been seen. Right. We were summarily dismissed, and that is the art of concealment, which nothing does better than Optifade by W. L. Gore in the form of Sitka Care. And be it open country, subalpine, certainly applies to the archery hunter at heart of use in those close range encounters through rifle, waterfowl, tree stand hunters, and the white tail, the elevated. Absolutely, the art of concealment is at the highest level through optics.